So people ask me, what's the biggest difference coming to Toyota compared to coming from, from the airline? And I was actually surprised because what I knew about Toyota was, of course, about Toyota production system and uh, the way that I saw Toyota. But coming into the organization, I must say that there's an enormous openness for innovation and willingness to learn. Uh, and maybe it's because the airline industry is quite regulated and, and there are sort of like more boxed areas uh, in that uh, in that industry, but uh, I was very impressed by that. The other thing I was very impressed by is actually the level of technology, which is very, very advanced, uh, very upgraded systems, very new systems, which I think is, is good. So, uh, what is Toyota Material Handling? Well, if we talk about Toyota Group, it's actually uh, two main companies. It's Toyota Industries Corporation and Toyota Motor Corporation. And Toyota Group is basically a group of companies who have a um, either a vendor relationship, supplier relationship, or investment relationship with these two companies. That's Toyota Group. Uh, and where I'm working is basically part of Toyota Industries Corporation, uh, which is the next box you have right there. Uh, it's a company with 47,000 uh, employees, and the uh, turnover is uh, 12 billion euros, roughly. And in that, we have Toyota Material Handling. Uh, there are five divisions in Toyota Industries. Material Handling, Automotive, Electronics, Logistics, and Textile. And Textile is, is where it all started once. Uh, if we continue uh, and talk a bit about Toyota Material Handling Group, it's a global organization. It's also actually number one in the world. And uh, we have basically uh, operation in all parts of the world. We have factories in the US. We just opened a factory in, in Brazil also. Uh, the main plant in Japan is in a place called Takahama. Uh, back to the brands. Uh, I'll touch shortly upon that. We sell several different brands and this has been because uh, it has been companies acquired by Toyota. And here we come back to the willingness to learn. What happens when Toyota buys a company? there is an enormous learning process. And, and uh, I think not very much will change until everything has been understood. And I think that's very good. And that's also showing the respect for the organization and the knowledge uh, that's there. Uh, I think that's, that's fantastic. So in Europe, uh, we're selling Toyota, BT, and Chesab are our brands, and then Raymond is a brand in the US. Um, Forward again, uh, just for information, factories in Europe, we have a factory in Sweden, one in France, uh, one in Italy, uh, which produce equipment then from Europe, and then a marketing and sales organization for 30 countries. A bit about the product range, just so you know where, what, what does material handling mean? Well, it's actually everything from, uh, on the far downside here, you see uh, internal combustion engine, forklift, electric forklift, uh, you have wear narrow aisle equipment, we have reach trucks, tow, tow trucks, order pickers, stackers, and, and hand pallet trucks. That's uh, the main business that we're in. Um, now I'm going to switch here and come to more about the Toyota way and, and the Toyota industry's business practices. Uh, I was yesterday in a board meeting in, in TMH France, uh, a local IT board meeting. And actually, the story starts when you are at the parking lot. Uh, that's where the story starts. You can walk around. It's a huge building. Everywhere you will find the message. And you will find, actually, these pictures that we use in Toyota Material Handling to symbolize uh, what, what we mean. And, and it symbolizes the culture. Visit any, any office, and you will find this. Uh, and what we're talking about. So on the far left, you have challenge, which is one of our, our key core values. Kaizen, Genshi Genbutsu, respect, and teamwork. Those are the five values that we are focusing on. Uh, and then if we start with challenge, how do I see that? How is that applied? Well, actually, it's a lot about target setting, to dare to stretch the target, to dare to take the challenge. And usually the target is, Number one, it's pretty clear. Uh, I think that's 
uh, how it, it's sort of perceived in the organization. And, and it's really stretched targets is, is key. Kaizen, well, talking about Kaizen, there it's really something that comes back in everything we do. You don't see any presentation you intend, attend where there's not something about Kaizen, because we need to improve everything. And I think that, that this is so built into the organization makes it natural. But uh, I think it takes time. I mean, I'm coming in from the outside, so I'm landing in an orga organization that's working like this. But it's, it's really part of doing this all the time, every time. Um, that's how it's applied. So we, you will find it. Whatever you sit, every meeting you're sitting in, this will come up as an item. Genshi Genbutsu, I mean, I was thinking I would skip this slide after hearing Steve Bell and the, uh, the, the Gemba walk in Uganda, because uh, uh, doing a Gemba walk in one of our factories is, uh, is a bit, uh, it's not, not, not the same type of experience, I think. Uh, but here, I think it's really very much about leadership uh, in a corporate environment, because it's really easy to talk about this, but really doing it and getting it done, you need... We need leaders who are doing it, and then everybody will follow. So I think leadership is very important here to get this done. It's really easy to put it on paper, but, but uh, doing it in real life, you, you need to have leadership. Uh, respect. Here we come back again to the brands I showed in the beginning. Respect for knowledge. Wanting to understand. Uh, maybe not putting on the table immediately that uh, Toyota production system is, is what we should do. Maybe spending time listening, understanding, really picking up the essence of what's there now. Comparing and then going forward. I think that's, uh, that's key. Uh, finally, uh, teamwork. Uh, I'll get back to this in, in the case study at the end because here we work in small teams, uh, we work quite tightly, we work globally. We spend an awful a lot of uh, hours on uh, communicating collaboration, collaboration tools, collaboration meetings, uh, which we do uh, virtually. We also, of course, uh, meet face-to-face uh, -face quite often, but uh, there's a very high level of activity. What do we do more on the practical side when it comes to uh, educating our staff? Well, actually, there is mandatory training in Toyota Industries Business Practices for all staff. Uh, and what this is, is actually, it's an e-learning. It's very comprehensive. It will take you a few hours to do it, actually, in several blocks. There's tests at the end. And what happens then is that you come to the classroom. Uh, and from my experience, you know, when you go to a training, you, you, you walk in there. And then you, you, you receive a big, thick manual, a package, you know, during the training, you walk home with it. And I walked into the training. I'm thinking, like, where's the study material? Mm -hmm. OK, we have a sensor here. Brilliant. And we had a fantastic day. Uh, and we do this, uh, actually, then with uh, uh, small teams. Very small teams. I think we were um, eight people in my group. Uh, and um, we use uh, local language. So our trainer was actually Swedish. Uh, if we have local people who have been trained, so train the trainer concept. Um, there's a lot about visualization, showing things, and also about target setting. Uh, more about this. Why do we do this? Well, we think it will make communication clearer. Um, it gives us a language to talk to, talk to each other uh, about. Uh, effective counts the measures as I've listed, quick decision making, and of course we also use the, the other tools. I'm not going to go into the Hoshin Canary, but that's basically the business planning process that, that we have in, in place. Um, let me go forward here a bit. Operating model IS. I'll tell, tell you a bit about how we're organized uh, in, in my department, so to say. And we actually split it into two distinctive areas, where one is uh, business relationship management, which is a team working close to the business, representing the business, 
uh, acting as a proxy for the business, um, putting the demands on a delivery organization, which is then, I put it here as operations, but that's, that's a different business um, uh, organization entity that is delivering to the business relationship management team. And between these two, we have SLAs and KPIs. Um, the organization is based in Sweden and, and in Czech Republic, uh, as are the main locations. Uh, then you might think, okay, well, what about these SLAs? So is there some kind of secret here, or, or uh, is there something that you should know? Well, actually, we're using COVID and ITIL, so uh, there's really no secret there. Uh, I think the secret is what's what's oh, sorry what's surrounding uh, this with with having everybody who are working in on the same terminology regarding lean and and uh, Toyota Industries business practices. That's the secret. Uh, but when we come down to the pure value streams, so to say, we apply the uh, the basic uh, processes uh, when we, when we deliver. Um, then uh, a bit about how we work then in the, in the IT organization and IS organization. Uh, what you see here listed is basically what you would find on an A3. Uh, we work really uh, PDCA oriented in, in our A3 approach. It's really problem oriented, uh, but then you can apply it on anything. Uh, I think you will recognize what's listed here with, with clarifying the problem um, down to standardizing the, the successful processes. Uh, and of course, very important being an, an IS, IT organization is root cause analysis. If we had some problems, what was the cause of this? And we put a very big effort into working with root cause analysis, documenting that and sharing that. That's uh, one of our top priorities. Um, now I'll talk a bit about the case study. Uh, it's one example of what we're doing. Uh, it's actually something called fleet management where you uh, try to get a grip for the customer of uh, the total fleet of the equipment that we have in place on the customer premises. Uh, so it could be maybe in a big site, uh, a few hundred forklifts in operation. And what we do is that we have delivered a, or developed the concept where we put a black box on the forklift that automatically then uh, sends information regarding the condition of the forklift, there are safety parameters checking, for instance, that the pre-operational pre check has been done. Um, there are uh, environmental parameters, there are checking the condition of the batteries. Uh, and this is how it works. So uh, there's basically this black box with a transmitter on every truck uh, that sends then over the mobile network the information automatically. Uh, it comes to one of our central servers. Uh, and then the customer can, can look at the information on a, on a tablet, on a, on a laptop, or a, a mobile phone, uh, and monitor the, the uh, progress and, and the, the situation. Uh, now, developing this solution, it was a, really a, a PDCA approach here, because we started some time ago, 2008, and uh, the first release was actually preventive maintenance, that we thought that how can we better utilize the service technicians in their vans uh, so that they know where to go. And if we can know in advance the, the status of a truck, when it probably will need some maintenance, we can plan better. So that was the first release. And what happened then was that the customer said, maybe we can have these reports as well. Maybe we can build in some, some safety features here. Uh, we did that. Now we have a shock sensor on the truck. So if the truck would, uh, for instance, touch something, we now, in the latest version, have an automatic alert so that the uh, warehouse manager on his or hers mobile phone will get a message, okay, truck number, it has happened something, and you have an immediate action and feedback, and, and, and here it's uh, productivity, it's uh, cost, uh, reduction for the customer, you talk about damaged goods, it's, it's, it's um, many, many customer benefits. Uh, we have installed 12,500 of these. We have them basically, mainly in Europe, but also other parts of the world, uh, in Africa and Australia, among other places. Did we use then the Toyota way when we developed this? 
Yes. The team that built this is our in-house team. They have taken the training. They are working with these concepts. And that's why we do uh, a lot of development in-house, actually. Does it work? Yeah, we won two awards for this solution. Or we're, well, we won one, and we, we are um, nominated for, for the second one, I should say. So uh, we we're very proud about that. And, and uh, we think that uh, we will continue to work with, with uh, improving safety and driving down cost, improving also environmental factors for our, our customers. Uh, in closing, um, I'll get back to where I started uh, about leadership. Uh, I think, as I said, that lean is maybe half the story. Leadership is the rest. Uh, to apply the concepts you need, we need leaders who are doing the, the Gemba work themselves, uh, who are working with these concepts to get people to follow. Uh, I'm very proud to be part of Toyota. Uh, we are working very hard with these concepts. Uh, but I'm also proud about the openness and the willingness uh, to learn that that uh, is in the organization. Uh, and we really want to share our, our way of working and uh, bring also your success and uh, success to our, our customers. Um, in closing, um, there's also about the internal communication between our staff members to have one clear language between us. Uh, of course, Kaizen uh, as, uh, as the way forward. Um, yeah, and competitive, yes, of course, we need to be competitive. Uh, as I mentioned, number one, that's where we are, that's where we want to be. So we're pushing it. Uh, yes, I think I'll close it at that and uh, 